Welcome to Happily Ever Aftermath, the podcast where we discuss relationships in movies and our relationships with them. I'm Polina Grinbaum. And I'm Diana Rojek Sconard. Hey guys, thanks for joining us today. Go ahead. Hello. <laughs> I already interrupted you. Today we're talking so about the, last time. <laughs> the Cutting Edge, 1992. Yes, uh, it's, uh. it was it was me. I picked this one. I well, take full true. responsibility for what's about to be talked about for the next um, hour. So I do. I was very excited about this movie because I really like ice skating. Really, I really like ice skating. Watching ice skating. Um, I did not know that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, just to get started, so the basic plot lines. I was reading this before we got started, uh, and I was wondering who writes this. But you know, this is probably on the bo- back of the box. Stuck up figure skating whiz Kate Mosley. Okay, yeah, I don't even. I just mm. weird. Okay, now so you got Kate, yeah. who is a ice skating uh, trained since day one. She's got the Connecticut rich father with probably a huge guilt complex. So I'm gonna give my baby whatever she wants, and she wants to be an ice skater. So and her mother was a show skater or whatever I, that means i don't know what that means and i wasn't even about to do yeah. research stuff so you got kate kate mosley um figure skating uh pairs mm-hmm. and she's uh she's in need of a partner because of a snafu at the 88 olympics yeah and inter brash harsh doug dorsey db sweeney db sweeney moira kelly they, you know, it's so funny because growing up, okay, mm-hmm. I saw this, I was, this came out in 92, if I saw when it came out, so let's say I was like 10 years old when this came out, mm-hmm. um, I don't know what your normal crushes were, and I'm not going to use the word crush like, you know, Jonathan Taylor Thomas or whatever the heck it was at the time, mm-hmm. but I won't, I'm not going to say that I had like a crush on D.B. Sweeney, but it's just like, Doug Dorsey's cool. He's really cute. He's, he's, he's like super sweet and charming. D.B. Sweeney's cool, and then like he was in that... Alien abduction movie, and I'm like, I don't know what he was. He, oh yeah, it's 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 really weird because it was based on a true story. So here I am. I'm just like, no, he's a hockey player. He's not that creepy guy who got abducted out of his truck when he was like, whatever. I have to admit that this is he is one of those actors that I'm like, oh, that guy. <laughs> he's he's. But like, I've never seen him, and I'm like looking at these movies, and I'm like, I do not remember. I any have, of these, like, I have a distinct memory of seeing him in an episode of like CSI. And it made me sad. He was because two and well, a half men. Because he did it. Did you say two and a half men or eight men out? No, he was in two and a half. Because <laughs> he, he was in the movie Eight Men Out. He clearly was. Uh, he was in like ten episodes of Two and a Half Men. Weird. Which I've never seen. I I don't know about that. But here's what's really funny is that this was my introduction to Terry O'Quinn and people who are unfamiliar. He played Locke in Lost, and my husband was really big on the TV show Locke. Mm-hmm. Locke. That's a movie, never mind. He was really into the TV show Lost, and his character Locke was really, really cool. And I was like, oh, sweet, it's Terry O'Quinn. He's like, uh, and, and it's just kind of strange that I'm just like, oh, no, I knew Terry O'Quinn when he was in this, and then he was on this TV show, and then he was in Old School. And I'm like watching this movie again, and mm-hmm. it weirded me out because he had hair in this movie. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like- oh, I totally, that's, that is it. Oh, my God. I was wondering where I'd seen him because he was another one. Of course, he was in Lost. Yes. Which I did watch. And he's also the stepfather, the crazy, yeah. those movies where the guy's crazy and he's going to have the perfect family. I'm like, no, 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 no. He's, he's, um, he's Kate Mosley's dad. That's who he is. He's awesome. I love that you have this thing with actors where they have one, they get one job and is now their job for life. If they like, are. They're not acting anymore. They're just like, they are just people who end up in a movie and that is their thing. It, it's what they do. That's just so funny. I don't care if he's on a wheelchair on an island. <laughs> he's looking for a he's, gold medal. He's, he's, he wants a gold medal for his daughter. Is it really for his daughter? <laughs> no. Is it? It's not. Well, let's talk about that, shall yes. we? So, okay, before we get into it. Oh, uh, so uh, two, two mm-hmm. clashing personalities that come together okay no i'm not i'm not well you didn't mention that um two clashing personalities it's not just the clashing personalities one is a olympic level hockey player who ends up having a act like ends up having an accident where he he uh he loses where he loses like part of his peripheral vision he yes he does he has a blind spot he has a blind spot it's a permanent condition Mm -hmm. if i start doing actual no it's good this is good you always actually remember the movies that you saw over and over again this is not a talent like this is not topic this is you got a blind spot doug 
It's a permanent condition. For some reason, I too, because I saw this movie twice, <laughs> which I try to do with a movie I haven't seen, um, is I too, for some reason, I'm like, was stuck on the turn, was stuck on that one line, mm -hmm. blind spot. Mm -hmm. You've got a blind spot. I'm like, does that somewhere? I don't know why I'm obsessed with that. You got a blind spot about blind spots? Like, apparently. Okay. Or something. Maybe. Okay. So, uh, so no, Doug just doesn't magically want to start figure skating. He no. has an accident when he's at the Olympics. And I really like that they gave all of this information. He's a, a junior at uh, Minnesota, uh, one of the hockey team's college there. And mm -hmm. as, as he got into his accident, my, my first thing I wrote down was, huh, can't play hockey anymore, but didn't finish college. That's a plot point that I'd like to. They actually mm. readdress it later on and there. I'm like, okay, good. I'm glad they did. Wait, they do? I was wondering that myself. It, it was a casual How line. did I miss okay. it? So they're having this thing where the Zamboni is going on their private ice rink. Yes. And uh, she is sitting there. She's reading a book. She's like, you know, you were in college, weren't you? He's like, you know, last thing I read in college was the letter canceling my scholarship because I couldn't play Oh, that's anymore. it. Yes. Oh, my God. Why didn't I? Yeah, of course. Yeah. So, and then I'm just like, you know, I put a check mark next to my note. I'm like, okay, no problem. I'm, yeah. I'm perfectly fine with that. Like, well, what about high school, you know? The only thing I had to read in high school was a scoreboard. They revered me. I was a yeah. god. Yeah. It took them two hours to to clear the to clear the, the ice thing. after they won the yeah. championship. So, uh, okay, going back here. Kate... Um, is a difficult person to work with. She uh, loses her opportunity, Winter Olympics 88. They go for a new partner after she walks away from her current one and her current coach, and they're just auditioning people over and over again. They went through 35 different yeah. guys, which that's incredible. And so, you know, as the coach says, the Russian coach, you know, mm -hmm. I, am, I am scraping, I am at the bottom of the barrel, mm -hmm. and then lock with his yeah. infinite wisdom, find a new barrel. Mm -hmm. Enter. You've got Douglas Dorsey. He knows how to skate. So let's give this a shot, you know? And that's that's what happens in movies like this, you know? Let's yeah. be extra, extra creative. And, and I applaud the thinking of it, but I also become insulted by it because it reminds me of just real-life version of it where, hey, you study computer science. That's awesome. You can go work at Geek Squad. Mm. It, it's just... Just stop connecting these two things. You play hockey, but you can't play hockey anymore, so go go be a figure skater. Well, okay, that I actually found very odd. Mm. And I did not, because I thought the way, it's like to me the way to solve this problem mm -hmm. was to have her just be like a single to be skater? a single skater that was actually said in the movie it was you said made her single skater you could just make her and they were like they just they dismissed that as if like granted obviously there would be no movie though actually it would be a very interesting movie because maybe then she has to like be alone she has to like i think deal with her own stuff maybe she finally processes her mother's death like it would be a very <laughs> different movie, which I probably, honestly, would have enjoyed a little well, more. Well, here's a question, and, it's, and this is interesting. Of course, it points out the flaw of go get a hockey player to replace a partner. Um, you should have made her single skater, and then she becomes a single skater, and then that has its own problems as well. Not in terms of uh, her, her emotional problems, but technique. Pair skating and single skating, that's like saying go work a geek squad, you know? You, I don't know. I wonder. I have no idea. I mean, it seems well, like, it. like, <laughs> it seems like it would be easier, but I don't know. To all figure skaters out yes, there. Yes, please, please, somebody tweet at yeah, us. Yeah, please at, tweet at us. It's, uh, it's HemeCast, uh, at HemeCast, H-E-A-M-Cast, all you figure skaters out there. I'm talking to you. Uh, yes. Uh, Oksana Bayul. Yes. Uh, Nancy yes. Kerrigan. Um, oh, God, please be. Christy Yamaguchi. And Michelle Kwan. Not in that order. You yeah. can all tweet us at the same time. No, Tara Lipinski. If Tara oh! Lipinski, if you t if you tweet at us, I will. And I'm sorry I'll die. that I um, wait. Scott Hamilton. There you go. Mark Hamill. Wow. <laughs> let's get Mark Hamill. On Dorothy there too. Hamill. <laughs> Barry something. Okay, let's stop. Let's stop. Brian Boitano. Okay, I'm okay. okay. <laughs> I'm okay. Um, so. Yeah, I just, I have no idea. Like, is that such a crazy thing? But then I think, like, has that happened? Like, I, I obviously don't know enough about figure... Maybe I don't like figure skating as much as I thought I did, but I do really enjoy it when it comes around. Okay, so you every really, four years. really like figure skating? I watch, like, the whole thing. Oh, well, like, wait, figure skating in general or the... Well, I, no, I mean, like, when the Olympics happens. I have to say, oh, I'm okay. not, like, a 
Sometimes I'll watch the Nationals. Mm. I've, I've watched the Nationals. And that was the other thing. I Listening it's so dramatic with Nationals and short program and long program, like I have no idea what's going on right now. So good Can I just that. mention one thing about the short long program yeah, thing? Yeah, go ahead. So in the, in the, at the end of the movie, mm-hmm. they have this, like, they show their Olympic program. Sure. And they, all the skating in this movie made me nuts, mm-hmm. but I will say that made me the, nut, the nuttiest because a long program mm-hmm. in the Olympics is like four and a half minutes. Okay. And we only saw the snippets? That's and we it. saw the snippets and they kind of did this, like, instead of just showing the whole program, they showed these snippets that only really got it down to three and a half minutes. Okay. Couldn't they have just shown us the entire program? I, I'm not so sure. As a casual viewer, I'm not sure if the program is what's after. I don't think they were going for the ice skating audience. Again. They were certainly not, because the ice skating in this movie is... <laughs> I mean, it was fine, but it was like, oh, no. the whole time, it was skates, faces, skates, faces... Well, what do you want? I want like actual ice skating. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna defend it just for a minute okay. there because this movie has multiple sequels. ABC Family made for TV movie sequels. Mm. So in order for me to get a little bit of closure, uh, I I knew that the characters not played by the same actors were in the first sequel. So you get a, a couple of you know extra Kate and Doug moments, and I wanted to see them. Oh, wait. Oh, okay. I started watching the first 10 minutes of it. Okay. They're the married... They're like... They're the couple. Yeah. In the, it didn't even occur to me. Well, the, the main character in the second one? Is their daughter. Is their daughter, yeah. Oh, hello. Uh, did you just think they were random people taking I was also interest? on the BART. I was like... Oh. There was a lot going on. There were like dancers or someone asking for money. Mm. I just wasn't really paying attention. Oh, okay. So for those of you who are not in the San Francisco area, the <laughs> BART... Is uh, is the Bay Area Rapid Transit? It's a transit it's system. It's a transit system. So you just so you know, she's not some random weirdo on a Bart Simpson doll somewhere. No, no, I'm actually yeah. Watching dancers. Was... There's so many interpretations of what you just said that people come <laughs> on with. But you know, if you live here and you're yeah, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. Oh, okay. So here's what I'm trying to get at. You've got mm-hmm. you know Doug. He's a hockey player. He lost his shot at the. The big time, and I, I had to do the math on there. So he was a junior in the 88 Olympics. So this is, you know, he's like 22, 23 by the time mm-hmm. this one rolls around. I wrote 23 years old when I was doing the math at the time mm-hmm. because we watched them train for two years over the course of yeah. this movie. And, and kudos to them. You don't really feel it, but they do mention it. It's like an episode of Law oh and God, Order. I think. Where you don't realize they're giving you the time frames and the doink doink interstitials. I don't realize they're giving you the time frame, but you're right. Yeah. That makes the movie well, make so Maybe that's why the second time I watched it made so much more sense. Okay, well, that, that works too. Okay, so Doug, Kate, Head, Horns, Lock, Angry, you're a Neanderthal, you're a Ice Queen. How is this possibly going to work? And it works. Mm-hmm. It worked. It worked. He works hard. The thing is also he's got he's got a lot to lose because basically he you see scenes of him after he like he can't play hockey anymore because of this minor thing, like where he doesn't really know what to do. Mm-hmm. He's working construction. Um, construction and also at his brother's bar. Right. In fact, he's trying really hard not to work at his brother's yeah, bar. Yeah, that's yeah. probably more accurate. Well, you know, there's a, there's a fight between the two of them. There's this uh he's a, okay, so he's approached by Kate's uh, tr- uh coach, Russian coach. Yeah, yeah, his coach and said, you know, um and and Doug's really excited, but he gets flown out for a tryout. They lock heads and it it, it is kind of strange. Just, again, as a logical person, you would bring somebody who has a peripheral skill, no pun intended, with mm-hmm. this vision problem, and here, now, go skate and, and do these things that are complex, but a different version of complex. Yeah, and you see him, like, trying to learn how to dance. Maybe it's, like, a, something you could do in two years. I, well, anyway... Because you have to also learn this... They're doing it 10 hours a day... Yeah. So I think if that's the only thing you're focusing on, they have boot camps for this type of thing. So if you can yeah. walk into, not not for ice skating, but for anything really. Yeah. I mean, what is it? Dancing with the Stars, where that's all they're doing? Eight hours yeah. a day learning to dance and they get better and better and better and better. Now I want to look up hockey player turned. Oh, 
uh, well, speaking of looking up hockey player stuff, when he mm-hmm. gives her the jersey for Christmas, and this is when they're still, they're warming to each other, but they're still like, she's the Connecticut princess, and, and he's... She's the ice princess. She's the ice princess. I reference her once or twice. I suppose so. But, you know, she gives him a book and for Christmas, and he gives her a jersey worn by Bobby Hull, mm-hmm. and I had to look that up. I don't know hockey. It's okay. I know. You know romance. I'm just, no. <laughs> Aw, I accept your compliment. I don't know romance. I know way too many lines from this movie. <laughs> I was, as Fair uh, enough. You yeah. know cutting edge. Well, as I was telling, telling my husband as I go, I haven't seen this movie in probably 20 years, and I still can tell you the names Smilkoff and Bruskin. I have to say. And I, I and, and wait, wait. Who? Okay. Smilkov and <laughs> Bruskin. I could remember that, but I forgot about Topic. Because in my uh, kind of, in my quick internet search of this, I had no idea, uh-huh. again, this is totally aging me, that this was like one of those kind of romance movie classics I that people like, people watched know. over and over again. I don't know if it is. I don't know if I'm, if I'm steering you in a wrong direction. Well, so I was reading a an interview with uh, with DB Sweeney, mm-hmm. and he said that like like five times a week someone walks up to him and goes, "Topic, really?" This was also like I don't know, maybe eight years ago. Oh, see, that's pretty awesome. Yeah. Uh, well, anyway, we should go back to the. Uh, oh, we'll finish the plot <laughs> of the movie. Topic. Topic. Yeah. Oh, again, I just don't understand why that's what I forgot. All these other things. Okay. So there's there's tension. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to know what you thought as it's going through because I know this is. Uh, my... Do you want to talk about how it ends? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No. Oh, do I want to talk movie. about? Yeah. It? Oh, yeah. Sorry. Okay. So uh, headbutting. They get to nationals. Uh, they're you know they actually weren't supposed to make it to the Olympics. But yeah. the, the only reason that they did is because another uh, couple fell. Well, they actually, they got, they had a really good skate and then they got unfair marks. And you know what? That actually really, really upset me because yeah. people, the, the, the audience is cheering really loudly, but the judges give them like a 5-4 average, you know, out of mm-hmm. six. And then, and then Doug has this like large explosion. He uses all these words that, you know, make you question whether or not this is a PG movie. And uh, what happens is, is that the coach comes in and says, you know, or no, actually it was the commentators that said, uh, some people don't understand that there's, you know, the audience may have their favorites, but the judge have their favorites as well. And it clearly, that does not include Kate and Doug. And I'm thinking if that's the case, wouldn't they have just given higher scores to the couple that fell rather than just making the lower scores? Because I am aware of, okay, help me out with this. Mm -hmm. You know, figure skating. Wasn't there some no, big much. thing of somebody who fell, but they still got the gold? Because yeah, there's because been, she I think, got back up, she got the gold. Well, it's also yeah, I think it's like how you land. I mean, it's there's all these Techn- different kind of scores. Well, there's technical and artistic yeah, according to the movie, yeah. and so that's what was really upsetting me. If they didn't like Kate and Doug, but they really liked the other one, they could have just ran with it and still send them because it's the scores that send them. But it's also like I mean if. Because she didn't get up. She just, like, the no, the no. woman who fell, like, didn't, like, she, she didn't, didn't, she did eventually. She eventually like, yeah. That's the whole thing. It's like, do you kind of get up quickly or something? I don't know. Well, to be perfectly honest, I don't really know how, like, I enjoy watching it. I don't really know how it's scored. Brina, she slipped and got caught in his leader hose. Okay, that was my favorite line. Really? That was so awesome. <laughs> and it was that such, was such a great little it throwaway like, joke. Too. It was so, she's like, Oh, it seems she slipped and fell as later as uh, okay. So so they go to nationals yep. and uh, I mean sorry they they end up um, oh so they getting they, a good they score get to nationals. nationals and so they end up in they the, they get to go to the Olympics and there's this um, this oh jeez the drinking scene. She's never had a drink in her life. Yeah. And what I don't like is that I understand there are people who have never had a drink in their life. She's probably 22 around there. And she's just like, I've never had a drink in my life. And I'm like, I didn't drink at that age either, but I didn't make it one of those things where I never had a drink in my life. Well, but it's, I think it's like part of that character building because it's kind of early on. And it's mm-hmm. like, I, it's part of her whole 
Like what I took that as, it's like another way that they're like, she doesn't really know how to have fun. That's like what that was shorthand for. No, that's true. If you, if and, you don't drink at that age, you don't have fun. Which, yeah, which was kind of a weird thing to use. <laughs> I'm only speaking of my You're also You her. also can be drinking a lot at that age and also not have fun. Ah. It's possible. Okay. But I think like, and then she, she ends up breaking up with her. Her fiance. Her fiance. Well, it's it's what okay. So they they have she's pissed off because they're out and about at nationals and he's and Doug's getting all of this attention. Well, yeah, he's a good looking guy who is a, a hockey slash figure skating star and mm-hmm. they're called groupies. Yeah, but yeah, I don't think that's particularly fair because she probably didn't have groupies because groupies don't typically follow women around it's, yeah it's the, it's, it's creepy it's, it's the like early 90s. 90s. yeah yeah it's the early know. 90s so the groupie thing is well there. also i guess like the theory the kind of undercurrent current is that she's jealous because he's basically he goes out and he, you know he Parties. was you see him as sort of like he already got set up as somebody who does mm-hmm. like kind of like you know sleep with a bunch of women yep so anyway so that happens so the then they go out starts. and get drunk uh-huh um and well, dance. as a celebration, he's like, you sure you want to do this? And, and this is my first question. As I don't drink Polina, so you're going to have to fill me in with your wisdom of the drinking <laughs> with my ways. Lushness. Well, no, with the drinking ways, because you, you drink more than I do. Therefore, you are far more experienced than I am. <laughs> if you're going out to drink for the first time, are you going to do a bunch of tequila shots? Okay, I'm sorry. That whole thing with the training wheels, I have a lot of issues with that scene. Okay. But you, actually, you, we should finish, and then let's go back to that No, no, no. Scene. You said training wheels. What? So that's what we used. I was a bartender. So anyway, okay. we used to call, like, when not, you... Go on. When you, like, when people would order a tequila shot with salt and then a, a lime. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I, I always... Uh, we would call that, we'd call it, like, yeah, shot of whatever, and then with training wheels. Um, so it's the salt and the lime. It's the salt and the lime. Why is that? Because you need you need the salt to overcome the first taste, and then you need the lime to overcome it the first time you that's have it. That's the theory, yeah. And I, that's I why just, it's training wheels. It's like you I should just, just be able to do a shot, I guess. But I, it's just also a convenient way of not having to say salt and limes. So I don't know. So, but so they were I, doing it with lemons, which is weird. Okay. And then also, yeah, Where's she would lemons? she did like six shots. She did I remember seeing four total but I think that was both of theirs. No, there was more than that. Well, Maybe I, 8. I'm going to say she did a lot of I shots. Don't count it's not Lena. good. I don't, <laughs> it's not when they do. I don't count. Anyway, there were a lot. Mm-hmm. More than I think like people should do. But maybe it was a course over a long evening. It was well no, it was also the first time. Also, didn't they have more skating to do the next day? No, I think that was the long program that okay. got them in. Okay. Cuz they couldn't they couldn't have gotten in just with the short program and the long program. I don't they wouldn't remember. have known. Oh. Right? Because okay. they do short program first. Yeah. Because remember, it's for, the short program is foreplay. I, I, oh, jeez. Okay, so, <laughs> here, so here's my thing. Let me back up a step here. So you've got Hale. His name is Hale, the, the fiancé. The boyfriend becomes fiancé. And he's paying attention to the fact that Kate is pissed off. Just yeah. to, to no because end. He's, because she's jealous. Because he's horrid around. It's not even whoring around it's just that he's receiving attention it's just like no 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 no. i'm the one that has the great boyfriend i'm the one that has this amazing life who is this guy to come in here with his not educated not moneyed ways he gets to have all of this fortune uh not fortune i'm sorry he gets to have the glory of all of this work when i put in way more work i never got that i totally got that she was just jealous that he that like women were giving him attention oh in je- well, or sleeping with them or well, whatever because she got really pissed when the coach sent him away for the weekend okay that's i think like, that's i think that's why i thought of it so yeah and i really really okay for the most part i have no sympathy for her because of her snobbish ways and i know that's the point you walk in mm-hmm. thought then you realize she's great but just the whole time she's saying the whole it's christmas and i skate i have the flu and we skate you know mm-hmm. i've been here every single day and you give him that's two good, days yeah. to go out pouring in new york city he went, he went to Boston. <laughs> wah, wah. That was so great. Yeah. It's actually Boston. And, I, and it's <laughs> so funny because as he's saying it, you can you can hear the coach trying to say, it's not the same thing. Yeah, it's fine which is sort you of don't weird. have any yeah, downtime, yeah, but exactly. he needs to go do but he's some a, stuff. But he's a, he's, a he's a young virile man. No, he's viral. <laughs> he's gone viral um so yeah it, it's it's okay so there's anger and i it, the first jealousy twinge i saw was uh 
the fourth, not the fourth of July. Hello, the uh, the New it's Year's like the New Year's, the New party. Year's party. You know, and she's she's got a boyfriend. It's really really nice, and you know. But he's in he's in London, so which is the other like shorthand romantic speak for he's never gonna stick around. Oh, uh, because okay. like there's the there's it's always is he an accountant, a podiatrist, uh, a dentist, <laughs> or. Hey. Or Canadian, or in an, or in Canada, or in London. Well, direct line. He's an yeah. MBA, mm-hmm. Harvard. You may have heard of them. They do have a hockey team. Yeah, but I do also appreciate her when Doug was saying, you know, oh, I played hockey here, and Hale comes in. Oh, I played a little bit of hockey myself, and this is one of those lines I didn't memorize because it was uncomfortable, and I didn't want to watch the guys have head butting. Oh, that, her line. Her line was, so was fantastic. Good. Just you know this overwrought male aggression yeah makes me that turns me up yeah so i'm just gonna go away and it was and i'm just like yay yeah Yeah, because way to call it what it is they definitely they had this like ridiculously awkward encounter where they both were like yeah well i uh there was a lot of chess there was some like weird chess like i can't imagine them like i'm so glad he just didn't turn him like yeah well i get to nail her so yeah you know, it, it makes about as much sense as I used to play a little hockey myself. It's like maybe we can go out on the ice together. And he's like, yeah, maybe we, maybe you can help me with I don't know whatever paperwork, paper, financial stuff. I'm sorry, Dad. <laughs> um, I never listened to the financial stuff. Yes. Well, I, I, that's not what Hale does. So that's um, okay. he does like meritage, whatever that is. I think that's a thing. It's a, I guess arbitrage. I don't know. Arbitrage, maybe arbitrage. I have no idea. Is is meritage when you're really happy about it? <laughs> no. Okay. I don't really even know what arbitrage is. So, so one of the thing. Well, it was a movie name. So yeah. Okay. So one of the things that I would like to point out, and this mm. is oh, I had so much fun when I read this to the cutting edge mm-hmm. from the writer of the Born Identity, the Born Supremacy, the Born Ultimatum, Are you serious? and Rogue One, and from the director of The Running Man, Kazam, and Starsky from Starsky and Hutch. Whoa! This movie's pedigree rocks! Oh my god, really? I started Okay, to my get... favorite weird little fact, should we just, we should wrap up like with the actual movie, but... I'm still going, go but, ahead. My favorite fact is that yeah. Moore Kelly um, act, like hurt herself while oh. skating. So that dance scene when they knock back all the tequila shots yeah. with the training wheels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, th- she, you notice thing, you never see her whole body. No. Because she was in a wheelchair and can only was dancing with her upper body. Okay. That's why she's dancing in this. Well, right now I'm dancing and no one, that's ridiculous. Okay. Well, yeah, and wonder, our producer is laughing at me. Well, you know, you were saying, you know, the, the whole thing is just skating face, skating face. That, that kind of adds to that as well. You would just assume it's a skate double type of situation, but uh, that if she's in a wheelchair the whole time, that's. No, she mostly danced dan- oh, with a skate double. Gotcha. And during the Pacheco, <laughs> which I just love. I love the, the Pacheco? Part. The Pacheco. Um, that was a dummy, and they couldn't help. Uh, I have a problem. They couldn't. With that their, their biggest problem, because he, he's spinning her around. Of this course. This is like physically impossible thing. It's literally, physics are involved, yeah. and it's impossible. It's impossible. He, which he does address in this in this uh, Entertainment it, Weekly uh, I, I interview. Read that. If you're a fan of this movie, which you apparently <laughs> read it too, basically, he couldn't keep the. Uh, they, their biggest problem was keeping the wig on the dummy. okay so also what's really but it actually makes me feel better because that was to me the part that was the hardest to watch that i had to fast forward through when i saw the second time was watching her practice oh my god just seeing this woman like being whipped around and they're all like it's all about him Mm where she's the one who's like taking all the damage into space and then thrown would, onto the ice, thrown onto the ice. I would freak out at the one scene. It's supposed to be at the height of drama. Yes. All of a sudden you hear, oh, and I'm like, oh my God, he just broke her neck. Yes. Because that's what they're doing. This move, he is spinning her and spinning her. And all of a sudden, all the time you're hearing the coach scream higher, higher. And I'm just like, yes, it does look cool. But in my head, when they're practicing it, it's supposed to, okay, it's a bounce spin to a throw twist. And you're mm-hmm. watching it when they're doing it at the end. And he does this, he addresses this in the article. Mm-hmm. He talks to the screen driver. He's just like, mm-hmm. how is this possible? Yep. Because he's supposed to be 
catapulting her, spinning and then throwing her up and then catching her. I'm thinking in my head, I filled in the gaps of how that didn't work. I'm just like, okay, yeah. he throws her and then he cat, he, and then he yeah, pushes no, I himself just, yeah. towards it and he yeah. catches her, but it still doesn't work. Because she's actually like she's being thrown down, but then she's supposed to she's, be up. She's she's he's up, up, and he lets her. G- I still can't figure it out. I can't figure if, it maybe out. Maybe if we break out a protractor. I think yeah, we need we there's, we need to get out a whiteboard, a protractor. Yeah, you notice that we're doing this the safe way by not actually practicing by throwing ourselves up in the no. air. It's dangerous. It seems dangerous, As, and then with I especially with ice. Mm-hmm. Like, there's ice involved. And here's what's really, really upsetting. Uh, they have their moment. He, she, okay, they have their fight. They have their moment. She says that at the end of that particular performance, she's retiring. They, he tells her, I love you, before they go out on there. And she's so moved that she says, we're doing, her response is not, I love you too. It's, we're doing the Pamchenko. And, and, and she says, because tonight I want to kick some ass. I have to say, I love more Kelly mm-hmm. in West Wing. And Oh, nice. So they do that. But here's something that just does not sit right with me. You have yet to successfully execute this move. Yes. You do not know yeah. how an actual successful well, execution I actually couldn't result. figure out if they did. Because remember, they were being interviewed mm-hmm. before. It's not ready. And... And he said, yeah, we got this move. And then she's the one who said, not ready. And everyone is was, shocked. Yeah, but everyone, but they put it in their program. So it's kind of assumed that they're doing it. That's what I mean. Like, I never figured out if it was that, it, if it was really not ready or not. Because if it was really not ready, they wouldn't have put it in the program at all. And people wouldn't have been so shocked when she said, I'm not doing it. Oh my God, I just realized this movie is a version of Dirty Dancing. <laughs> <laughs> no, where they do the it's, move and they do the you move. never see them do it successfully, yeah, but when it's the like, height yeah. of the performance, they, you know, there's a thing. And when they're doing this dance, mm-hmm. the father yep. is like cheering, which no normal parent would be cheering. They'd be like, oh my God, my God, oh my God, I can't watch this. I can't watch this. I can't watch this. Whereas, no, 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 no. My observation is, no, no, to be fair, Polina, he is, he is, he's not cheering. He, he has that... Uh, this is the this is the church. Here's the steeple finger thing going on here up to his lips because like <laughs> that's right. My daughter is amazing, and I knew this would happen this whole time. It's his self satisfaction oh, thing going on there. No, he's not cheering. He's just like that's right in his head. And what's kind of creepy though is that as you're doing the whole people are cheering as they're doing amazing moves together. Mm-hmm. You see like the intercut of them skating, and she's like she's like so far up against him and it's very mm-hmm. romantic and then bam there's the dad's head and I'm like oh that's mm. gross oh, yeah, I didn't that's what every that. father wants to smile and <laughs> yeah. nod as his dad. I know he's smiling and nodding because they're doing an amazing performance but no there's the undertone of sexy and yeah that's that's well my... this is their big romantic moment it is their big romantic is moment they skate. and everyone's watching their big romantic moment I just realized actually when I was thinking this probably was kind of, probably was a, would would have played probably in my fantasy life that you have these like this romantic single skate or a double skate moment. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I didn't actually realize that until you just said that. Oh, that's kind of embarrassing. Oh no, that's the, no, that you're welcome. Thank you. Okay. Well, oh. that, well, it also doesn't help that one of the pairs that they were up against were brother and sister. Oh yeah. If they ever did that, that'd be gross. That's why he was wearing lederhosen. That's she not, got caught. That's not sexy. <laughs> no, there's nothing. And that's another thing that comes up in there with the whole completely different dynamics, though. She, when they're doing the costume fitting. Oh, my God, yeah. he's wearing a matador costume covered in sequins. And thank God he just takes it and just rips it off. And yeah, says, he's nope. like, this, no. Which I feel bad for the people working, but they're still going to get paid. I totally felt very bad for the cause because I'm like, wow, that must have just taken a, it's hard to make a jacket. Like, that was like, yeah. and, and, and this is the problem with watching things this is somebody who's it looks like a middle-aged woman. So you're like, oh, that was probably a lot of work. Yep. Yep. <laughs> and, and just the, the sequins. And I know it's it's figure skating and it's just the, the costumes there. But this is so like, it was 80s, so over the top. 90s explosion. Oh, yeah. because also, it would have been hard to dance in the like figure skate in that thing. There was just a lot to it. it like, would, yeah, she would have gotten caught in this like. 
scarf thing that he yes. had as like a sash. It was a sash. Well, it was a sash. Let's just call it a sash. It meant to be a representation of the the bull red. This is where you you know. It was what is that called? I don't I don't speak matter. Um, <laughs> a cape. A cape. Cape. It doesn't have a special name. It's well, it probably does, but it is a. It's I'm, meant to be a cape. I'm going to say it has a special name i'm sure it does yeah. everything has a special name Absolutely. plus you're, yeah it's probably cape it could but, be cape in spanish i have no idea but see that's what's really interesting going to the costumes and the elaborate stuff because mm-hmm. he wants to be a little bit more modern and, and with the times where she wants to play mozart he wants to play rock and roll which is also ridiculous like they're both wrong like Maybe something else other than that one piece, which is in everything. Sure. Maybe play like, and maybe like, like hard rock is not, isn't like early 90s hard rock is not going to be the best for, well, it's not going to be the best for, it's, uh, it's not, uh, for your long program. Like that was ridiculous. Well, okay. So he has his choice and I think it's great that she kind of bent to him and his costume was the, the white shirt with like the black splatter. And I'm like, way to be early 90s. Oh, it was so early Fantastic. 90s. Though also, I really wanted that shirt. <laughs> okay. I really, really like that shirt. And I'll, I'll give you this. This is really important. To all of you who have seen Blades of Glory, do not dismiss the whole rock and roll thing. I, cause is, have you seen Blades of Glory? Well, oddly, so I was, uh, I to get here, I got stuck on. I ended up taking a little longer to get here because I got a little lost, but... Um, I was, uh, so I was reading all these reviews of the movie Mm -hmm. and one of the things that somebody said is like, like, even though it's a spoof, Blades of Glory actually has a lot more ice skating in it, which instantly, because I was, you know, realized I was going to be, um, on public transit for a little longer than I planned Mm -hmm. was, I was like, where can I download Blades of Glory right now? Because this, it seems incredible. And I so I've not. But I am literally, like, I think that's what I want to do. We're going to hold tonight. that conversation until you have more of an insight of that. All you people who have seen Blades of Glory, you're welcome. <laughs> yeah, the cutting edge, it feels, okay, so Blades of Glory will poke at all of these things that are meant to be genuine mm-hmm. in in the cutting edge. So I'm not sure where to go with that, but that's fine. So, well, no, that's perfectly fine. It's just that I you just say, really you want to see blades of glory. You now. just, you just don't see the rock and roll thing. And it's exactly that. Because oh, I never, see. It's never mind. Go, go see it and you'll, you'll, yeah. Well, then we can talk. It's I'm probably way over hyping it. Okay. It'll be so, like, so as, so, you know, it ends the way you would expect it to end with the, with a whole bunch of names going up with a, <laughs> like every movie. It's that's great, like that's my every question. movie we've seen so far. I feel like that's the one thing it has in comic mm. is at the end. There's all these names just scrolling. Well, wait, my fair lady. Wasn't that made back in the day? And the names were in the beginning. Damn face. <laughs> yeah. No, that was just, I, just, just let me, let, just let me Terrific. do my lame dad joke and move on. Um, <laughs> So, okay, All right. the predictable ending, they, without horrific injury, they complete the Pamchenko. They complete the Pamchenko. They love each other. And without any regard for the laws of physics. Yes. <laughs> and, 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 and there's the, the love decla- decla- the declaration, the, re- the uh, repeating, no, the sentiment is also mine and I kiss you. And then the music starts with the, the happy music. Yes. Yeah. So. Yes. Tell me. Tell me about when you first watched this movie. Did you watch it over and over again? And what? I don't know. Smoke what? off and Bruskin. Did I watch this over and over again? Yeah. <laughs> Stupid question. No, apparently. Like, see, this is what if I. You was... remember Smoke off and Bruskin, which are great names. That's actually that was one thing. Is there's some great little jokes buried in this. I also just before I want to say that um, I loved, I loved Roy. Dotrice, Dotrice, I don't oh. really know, but Dotrice, who I'm so sorry, uh, Roy, um, but I loved, I just wanted all Pamchenko all the time, and not just the move. I wanted the entire movie. I want them to. I wanted two and three to be just like Pamchenko's next trials. He could have been an amazing spinoff, like yeah. if you have He's... Shrek and then Puss in Boots. If you have yeah. Kate and Doug, you can have 
Pemchenko. Oh, Pemchenko. Can, can, can we just, more Pemchenko. More. I just want more Pemchenko. He's because fantastic. also, I, I, this is embarrassing. I was totally like, God, this guy's like, like, he is very genuinely and very fami- familiar to me. Mm-hmm. He's very Russian. And then I find out he's British. Oops. So there I am. Well, that's okay. And that, I'm that's the one who the... won't watch the Americans because he acts uncertain well, there... to me. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, the testament to his performance is fantastic. And, yeah. and is also his uh, celebration after they nailed a, a, a routine by itself. Just just him in the background doing the whole Yes. Thing. Yes. Yeah. And, and, and he, cause just like you, he gets these like little Russian phrases in all mm-hmm. the time. Yeah, I love As that if, he like, calls... she was going to, like, understand him, and then he, like, says them again in a minute. And... I love that he calls her Katya. Oh, I know. It just sounds so beautiful. Oh. Which is so God. great. And it, also, and it also feels Katya. like a, just like a, a father-daughter relationship. Yeah, totally. Yeah, just... that's the thing. He's, like, perfect. He's really funny and really warm, mm-hmm. and he's just a really good actor. So I am super... That's awesome. Go, Roy. So if this came out in 92, uh, I, I'm still trying to figure this out, because I didn't see it in the theater. I am speculating that this is a movie that my father brought home after what I asked for was not a blockbuster. <laughs> I'm, I'm serious because that would happen a lot. Yeah. Because I'm just like, it would happen a lot. Go get me Ace Ventura. Uh, they didn't have it. So for I'm our not. younger listeners, <laughs> oh, okay. we, used to have, we used to have to go to a shop to yes. get our movies. Yes, correct. You know, before Amazon brought you everything, yeah. be it instant stream or to your door. I get very angry when the movies that we choose on this podcast are not available. Like, I'm like, I'm you mean I have to go to a store no. or I have to wait for I, the internet to bring it to me? What's great about where I live is there is a place where you can rent movies. And I go in there and I just drool and I get overwhelmed and then I run away because I can't. I, can't, I found, <laughs> I, can't I, remember, I remember having fights with people. About what? About rent. like when you're in the the store. We were. That would be in the time that it took us to pick what we were going to watch. We could have rented and watched it. Yes. By that totally. point. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Whereas Netflix is just like click, click, click. I can still do that with myself. Oh yeah, yeah. But you're. But it takes to, up less time. I don't know. I don't need yeah. to argue with a person. It's yeah. just that it's environmentally better because <laughs> it's environmentally better because I'm not driving to a place to yes. argue with somebody. And yes, I can a... just argue with somebody, either myself or... Well, the thing that used to drive me crazy is, especially with Sean, uh, my husband, is that he would always be like, oh, I've seen that, or I've seen that so many times. It's really good. Maybe next time. And so there's all these movies that I haven't seen yeah. because that he he is like... It was because he's like, oh, I've seen it too many times. And I'm like, damn you for spending, like, your 20s with a job that let you, like, in a house full of people where there were always movies. Uh, I, I had the I same know. discussion with my husband about where we're eating. Oh, no, it's really good. It's just that I, I had it yesterday. <laughs> so we don't go there, and then, yeah. again, we argue. Actually, I do that to him. I'm like, oh, I had sushi yesterday. So I'm approximately 11 years old when I'm mm-hmm. seeing this, but I'm trying to remember. I think it is one of those ones where I, re- I have a distinct memory of the VHS tape that says the cutting edge and the the, the print on the side mm-hmm. because and I want to say it's one that I did rent and over and over again, but didn't record off of like an HBO free weekend thing. Yeah. I loved those, but no, I want to say it was one of those tapes, but it was a constantly rented over and over again, but yeah. I, didn't, I didn't have it. So it was definitely that. And like I mentioned, there are many sequels to this movie, but the first one came out, I want to say 12 years after the original. Yeah. And so clearly it had captured mm-hmm. some imagination somewhere. It, 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 it's sentimental to the people. I, I don't even know if it's my demographic, but it, it, right place, right time. Yeah. I was looking like, is, was this a big hit? I don't know. I don't remember it. I don't remember having discussions with people about it. But I think that's just because my movie watching I mean, was like my own. It's like everyone's secret shame, yeah. Maybe. But if I were to go to my house and have dinner with my family, my mom could probably quote a couple of lines because you watch that over and over again. It weirdly, like, as some, I watched it twice, and I kind of enjoyed it more the second time. Maybe it was my mood. Maybe it was how I was watching. Who knows? But I, you like... a deeper appreciation for the Russian? <laughs> I just really just wanted more from Chink. I was like, I was like, I... 
I could just sit through this. There's going to be more Pavchenko. <laughs> Where is my Pavchenko? And that's why sequels happen, because people wanted more Pavchenko. <laughs> but there was, is there Pavchenko? In pim- this, this is pim- Pavchenko in the second, in the sequel? The move is in the third one. I don't want the move. I, I know, want him. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I, I just want someone to actually do the move, but no one ever, of course. <laughs> that's the thing they do, like, every time they skate, they do, it's just, they do, they cut. And then they cut... They go like slightly slow motion. They go soft focus. It's there's no if there's not enough skating. Okay, all right. I I am anyway. So you're you're well, no, ten. No, You've I seen am, it. You keep renting it. I'm a sentimental it. fool. I watch it over and over again. Uh, it's again. It's it's one of those things where just like they're fighting. But you know, I didn't have that whole. Um, I need to find someone who's going to be angry with me. I need, I want to, you know, the love of my life is going to be an angry, angry man. It's funny. There's this. Uh, Actually, he wasn't that angry. He was just kind of gruff. He was gruff, but also she was a complete. I'm gonna marry a rich Connecticut ice princess. She was really nasty. I'll marry a rich Connecticut ice princess. <laughs> that was you. She, her behavior I said rich. was okay. That's true. I said rich. Yeah, if you're and gonna go the, for one. And that's the other thing. It's definitely a culture clash movie. It's I, like he's the rough, like working class, Connecticut, like, Minnesota. Yeah, he's Connecticut. It's like Connecticut, Minnesota. I mean, she has her own ice rink for God's sakes. That's awesome. And they're constantly like they go to front and they rent in an enormous like a chateau. And it was just a casual line, like we're leaving now, but we have the place for two, two weeks. weeks, so you can just and stay in as Chicago long, during the nationals, yeah. like. We rented like a whole box of uh, for your family. floor for your family, who never come, by the way. Well, they were supportive when they did their yes. cheering from the yes. Thing. They they cheered at the bar. Yeah. Okay. So sorry. Yes. I, my well, no. problems with this movie aside. Okay. What? Okay. So you watch no, this no, no, over no. and over again. Well, no, no, no. We watched this over and over again. It wasn't such a big. I watched it over and over again. My thing was, it's like it. It. It's just I liked their relationship. It wasn't I want this. It was just I like them. I yeah. and and of course I I want to I I would always have the truncated here's where they're fighting here's where they're fighting here's where they're thawing here's where they're thawing here's where they're together yay so that's how you because I'm always fascinated with what you latch on fast forward it through Smilkoff and Bruskin Smilkoff and no, Bruskin no what um, I <laughs> fast forward through I I fast forwarded through the the training where she keeps getting hurt but I watch the training where he gets hurt because that's not fair. Yeah. That's not fair. No, because for him, it's funny because toe pick. Yeah. But for when it's her, it's no, she's going to, he's going to break her neck because he just falls and he's going to get bruised. She might have her face smashed in, but, mm-hmm. but, 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 but you know what also? There's mm-hmm. the, the funny falling music in this montage. Yeah. But this one is the serious. It was again, really intense. Again. It was like again, and it was basically like you just see her being whipped through there. I mean, mm-hmm. there, it's funny because it's also him like losing control on ice skates. Right. So you're like, oh, okay. Like, it's him falling on ice skates, but like in a normal falling on ice skates kind of way, sure. not in a like, you are being hurled through the air mm-hmm. repeatedly. You're right. I will also so admit. So I, I think it's fine. Well, no, I will also admit to, I fast forwarded through the drinking thing. Yeah, the drinking thing was kind of ridiculous. And then she, at the end, I, I don't really blame you. Plus like, I also it's fast it's through, a drinking montage. It's, I fast forward through the drinking montage, and I fast forward through the unfortunate rejection. Oh, that was really awkward. Was I rough. think I kind of like I started when I was rewatching it. I think I, I was on the like I watched different parts of it. Sure, second time, but yeah. I was like when I rewatched, I think I like instantly took out my phone and started playing, you know, two dots. So like you were listening to it, but you weren't watching it. Well, just because I was like, well, I don't, I don't know why. I just I was. Like I was watching it on Voodoo, which had like was just really hard to control. Like not a sponsor. so, what? Not a sponsor. Not a sponsor. Uh huh. Um, and uh, anyway, I was on a. It was just hard for me. So I, I just I think I that's what I do when I'm uncomfortable is I like oh. pick up my phone and start playing like a casual game. But you have enough courage to actually have it playing, and you're going through it, and you know it exists. No, I will just nope. And it used to be that I would fast forward it, but have it perfectly timed to where I knew where to hit play again. I think that's the thing you knew. I was worried I'd miss something. Oh no, that's where. Well, that it was but, so awkward it's, though. It's he basically like takes he she she comes on to him and he he rejects her mostly because she's really drunk. Yeah, 
Well, and he's like, this but, is not how I want this to go down. Well, and that's, you know, I, I don't like that whole trope of thing of like, he's the good guy because he's not taking advantage of her while she's drunk. But I don't think that that's what it is. There's a trope that you see that all the time. I mean, I think that is part of, I don't know if I'm going to, That's. Not, I think that's part of it is that he doesn't, but he also, I think he's like, you just, you're, you're, like, this is not the way I want this to go down. Because you get the feeling he's definitely like, he likes women and you like in the beginning of the movie yeah you see him like basically uh well he, he the, the, at the 88 olympics for watching it for the first time in in 20 years um i'm actually seeing things actually happening and it actually kind of fills in some blanks as much as he's not going to you know talk to her about you know he's not going to do mm-hmm. this because she's drunk there's more to, you know there's there's something in his whole thing he's like no it's not like that and you know that he wants to be mm-hmm. with her but at the same time, he knows that she is in a not good place. That's what I mean. Like, this t- isn't yeah, how she... he wants this to go down. Yeah. And, but but the thing is, the whole point is, is that he does want it to go down. Yeah. Not because he just wants to have sex no, with her. No, but not because... this way. Well, there's 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 not this way, I don't want to have sex with you while you're drunk. And there's not this way, um, I want to be with you. Mm-hmm. And also have sex with you. But there's, I want to be with you. And also afterwards, I want to be yeah. with you. And yeah. then there's... Uh, I want to be with you, but just the sex, but you're drunk right now. There's the, there. I kind of got that I, it was the second I can, and it was like, I can draw this a, is a not a romantic. Okay. Oh, okay. Is there like a, so because, yeah, because when you have the, the multiple scenarios of that, then, you know, there's all I feel like part of why he doesn't is like, she just broke up. She just, he, she knows, he knows she's heartbroken is or, she? well, I don't think she is, but like, you know, he's being polite. Like, Maybe the like the day that you win nationals, break up with your partner. I mean, break up with your fiance, and you're wasted for the first time ever. Mm-hmm. Is not the time. But but then you wanna. But but this is the same guy who made the the right decision then to not take advantage of this emotionally charged situation decides to say, I love you when they need to step exactly. out onto the ice. They have to step out onto the ice. And he's like, he's like, I, I'm in love with you. And it's not even like they're backstage or whatever. They are literally about to step out onto the ice. Oh, it's insane. They're being pushed out onto the ice. And that's but, what's kind of interesting. And everyone keeps being like, she, he's like, he's like, shut up. I'm trying to declare my love for this woman. And they're, they're yelling at him in a different yeah. language. Yeah. And that's even better. Uh, no, there is a line that I absolutely adore that I had mm. forgotten about, and I am trying to find it. So, will you please fill yes, the yes, airspace I'll, while I'm? Wait, trying is to... it the line when he says that I I, I love you? That it, it's yeah. We can't. We would rather not be to like. No, no, I would. No, no. Find oh. it for real. Don't butcher it. Okay, I won't butcher it because <laughs> no, I will just, butcher. Just fill the time. Okay, so. so I have a question. Mm-hmm. Um, how did you like? So you fast forwarded through the uncomfortable scenes like the sort of people fighting and people getting hurt. Mm -hmm. Like what was it about this movie that um, do you like that you felt had an uncomfortable or not uncomfortable? How did this movie like shape your romantic ideas? Well, again, I'm not sure if it so much shaped anything. It's just, Mm -hmm. I think this one didn't have like, it didn't, it didn't penetrate the, the core mm-hmm. of what is and is not supposed it to be just love, kind of romance love, anymore. Lovely. I think it, it was just it was just sweet. Yeah. I think by then I was just like, this is sweet to watch. I want to watch this, but I didn't think that that's what it was going to be. You know, it might have just been that just because you know, might have been just just because I'm fighting with a person or just, I don't know if I wonder if I tried to artificially create conflicts with people because that's how you fall in love. Mm. I'm wondering if that contributed yeah. to that because I'm not going to blame the cutting edge. But I am going to say that lots of movies, because conflict sells, mm-hmm. conflict is what makes the story go forward. So if like there was this whole like artificial, you know, it's kind of like you pull a girl's hair and yep. then she chases you around. I don't pull a girl's hair. I'm sorry. Boys pull girls hair in, in the heterosexual <laughs> yeah, you context of, you know, on the playground. And then, you know, because, you know, he isn't that one of those things that. Uh, what was it? He's just not that into you. Had played. It's so confusing. A guy, a boy 
on the playground pulls mm-hmm. your hair, that means he likes you. Why does that mean he likes me? Why that makes yeah. no sense. So as an adult, yeah, you, you you think that oh he rejects you. Well, that just means he likes me. Well, and they kind of analyze that in the movie because her her fiance at one point says that that's foreplay. Oh, see that right? That and was, so that was he's basically that like the way that you you know guilt or the way that you guys relate to each other and this constant fighting mm-hmm. you're constantly fighting because there's it's basically foreplay like you're engaging with each other okay well again i fast forwarded through that so it didn't get into my psyche i think anything where the fiance was in the scene <laughs> it was really boring and kind of and really annoying but he that, was like, annoying well he wasn't great but, but they i mean he's he, the throwaway he's fiance. on paper he's on paper fantastic yeah he's a throwaway on paper fiance that's yeah. the thing he's they're it's part of the trip. Okay, so re-watching it, yep. how did it feel? Uh, mildly embarrassing. Okay. I'm wondering why. That, well, it's like it's, what about it was mildly embarrassing. Well, it's it's cliche central. It's but I think what happens is is that I, I'm like, oh, I don't think I like this as much as it's it's kinda like um no, never mind. It's watching it and I think I was just as happy to watch. I think I was more happy to watch the sports elements, the underdog story rather than the mm-hmm. love story. Uh, and she, yeah. It's the Olympics and it's watching somebody literally fall and get right back up again and go yeah. for it. So you, you got your training montages and you got, it, that was more prominent than the romantic montages. Mm-hmm. And I will give that movie full credit for their workout montages. It wasn't just skating, 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 skating. No. It was weightlifting. It was running. It was dancing. It was ballet. It was all of this stuff. And it was, just, you know. I There's think, a lot. It's a, a montage heavy movie. Yeah. There's oh, a with, lot of montage. With the fantastic music, the soundtrack. Oh, thank you very much. So good. Yeah. It was a weirdly 80s. Even though it was meant to it be. It was in those. Well, yeah. It was, I guess it was. No, it was. Well. It was, it was supposed to be 88 to 92. It was made in 92. Mm-hmm. And, and just the, the transition of the, the big dresses and the yeah. puffy shoulders and the, and the limo that looks like you could cut your wrist on the corner of one of its <laughs> pieces. Oh, God. It gets so boxy. So boxy. That, I know. One of those things. So, I'm again. It's it was there. I watched it all the time. I loved it. I still love it. But if I were to watch it, just you know, make someone else watch it. Sorry, it. it <laughs> I, I'd feel bad because like it's. Your friend, it's Selena. Yeah. <laughs> You're not my friend. <laughs> <laughs> it's. It, well, again, I when you said uh, you're, uh, I watched it again, I liked it a lot more the second time. You didn't like it the first time. We'll talk about it on air. <laughs> oh. Well, now I feel bad. Hey, I made you watch. No, no, don't change the subject. <laughs> no, this is, it's, okay, but again, it's not like I had a gun to your head saying, okay. you will watch this. My issues with this movie is I was Please. actually psyched. Like, first you said The Cutting Edge. I looked it up, and I'm like, figure skating and Moira Kelly. <laughs> like, though, that delighted me. A I winning find combination. Her, I'm like a winning combination. Um, That would be my, you know, uh, Tuesday Night Movie Olympics, but a pair, but... She was she was really charming and good. She's awesome. Um, and there just wasn't enough figure skating. So I was like, uh. But also she played such an unpleasant character yeah. that was clearly like the whole thing was that she, you know, she basically never really had any friends. Yeah, she admitted like, that. That's, well, I don't like know. she didn't go to school. She had, you know, she had tutors. Mm-hmm. She has her own ice rink. Her fa- basically, it was always about her father. Yeah. Um, it was about, uh, like, her father kind of wanted this because her mom, like, her mom died. Um, and, and they end up together, like, at the very end. So you don't really, it, like, the last kiss on the ice, which is also ridiculously improbable. They would have just gotten them off the ice. Well, it isn't so much that. And it's, it's like, kind of unprofessional. Just holding that particular position. They're, they're ending in a yes. certain thing, and then they kiss. I'm just like, I'm getting tired just looking at that pose being they are They long. are athletes. They are athletes. They are athletes, and they can kiss in positions that, you know, we cannot think about. Hey, hey, this oh, is, I'm a, sorry, this I'm is sorry, a PG sorry. movie. Sorry. Keep it clean. <laughs> Keep it clean. Her, her father <laughs> was watching. Her father was wa- You're right. You're right. Yeah. You were saying. Um, no, that's all I was saying. <laughs> now, now I'm like, what happens after? 
<laughs> what if there weren't all those people watching? Well, speaking of what happens... What do they do when they go back to the ice rink? Come back to me. <laughs> oh, sorry. Come back to me. Okay, so speaking of after... Yes. Do you think... Where, where do they end up? Okay. Spoiler, there's four sequels. Um, well, this is the thing. I'm, I'm kind of disappointed because this blows my whole theory. However, it is my theory, and I can pretend that I didn't watch 10 minutes of the first sequel. No. Um, so... I think that uh, I'm going to give them, like, maybe 10 months. Okay. Um, one, uh, they're probably not going to go to another Olympics, but maybe they will. Mm -hmm. um, she probably is going to retire because she's like, I'm ready to do something else. Let's mm -hmm. ignore the sequels, okay? Mm -hmm. This is my thing before yep. I saw them. Um, I uh, Because she realizes, like, okay, this is good, but I actually need to – do some other things and her father has money so she can pretty much do whatever she wants. Mm -hmm. She's going to become a really resentful because he probably doesn't, he doesn't have as many options and he probably will continue to skate. And then she will become jealous of his partner and, or his, and, or his like, um, single skating success. Mm -hmm. I think he will be that one relationship that will not only open her up to love, but also to her, like body as something other than simply someone who skates, like he'll sort of be that person to give her to sort of, you know, to be like her, like basically or like sort of a sexual awakening kind of thing. Sorry. I don't know why I'm being so coy. PG um, movie. PG movie. Well, this is the thing that happens after and, you know, it's oh, a so this podcast. Is the, this is the fan fiction. This is <laughs> not going to start writing cutting edge fan fiction. Oh, it's out there. Just, I'm not, I just, just for the record. Um, what did they do on that? What did they do? Okay, maybe I am. I don't know. It took two hours to clear everyone out of there, and all Doug wanted to do that whole time. Go on. You went further than I did. No, I'm just... I'm... I'm Topic. That's, that's, Topic. A, that's a callback Topic. to the movie. Um, now, for those of you who have seen that movie, <laughs> you know it took two hours to clear everybody mm -hmm. out because they were selling... He was a god, blah, blah, blah. He was a god. God. That's what he said. Um, and so I think that they will, I maybe, you know, maybe a year because they've kind of got the like their parents are to them. But once, you know, once Pam Chaco is not there to give them relationship advice, like they don't have much in common. Like, I think they respect each other. I don't think they're going to break up and like, I think they're going to leave with respect, but they're going to realize that their lives are not really, sorry, yeah. um, their knives are not really, uh, compatible in a way like they're both incredibly focused yes they're definitely about winning yeah they're comp they're ultra competitive uh it's i know that's the hallmarks of all the love la long lasting relationships always when you got two people who just are so a. focused on their career it mm -hmm. always goes well but i know so i mean i think that's the other thing is they're both realistically going to they're they are both in another, they're about to enter another phase of their lives, but it's actually not the same phase. Okay. And so I think Individually that- Individually or together? I think in, that's the problem. They're going to have to enter it individually. Okay. Um, so I'm, yeah, that's, I don't think it's going to be a long lasting thing. I don't think it's going to be a terrible relationship. I think actually it'll be very good for both of them. Okay. Because I think this is probably going to be his, I, my theory is this is his first real, like for this will be his first like real relationship with someone that he takes seriously, that he cares about. Um, and that will be really good for him. Like, I think it'll be a good growth relationship for both of them, but I don't think it's going to be a long lasting relationship for that's, both of them. That's very pragmatic. Okay. Stop ruining my childhood. Because you should not, have gone first. No, I wasn't going to go first because that's not really the point. <laughs> you apologize to future children of Kate and Doug. I'm sorry to the future children of Kate and Doug. Though, with the 10 minutes I did watch, she's a really nasty, nasty girl. Not, she's mean. She's not, well. Okay, she's going through a hard time. <laughs> it's not an excuse. <laughs> 
Okay, so in my own, again, that's why it was really hard when I realized there were all these sequels. I'm like, well, I can't really. I wish I hadn't watched the well, first 10 I minutes of the sequel. I can't make the prediction because the sequels. Yeah, but it's, they're not written by the same person. I told, no, I think. No, he was busy writing Rogue One. Yeah, and <laughs> it's two different people and a compl- and it's 12 years later and they're not the same, the same writer. So I feel like the sequels are not somebody else's idea. Mm-hmm. Of this movie, just like our, and is just as valid as our idea of what happens to them in the future. But so only if, I say we own it. But only if we get as many people to listen to this as the people who have watched the sequel. I don't know how many people watch that sequel, but well, two. I mean, they're least. probably already. They're well, probably already. Uh, well, you and me right now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> two. Well, ten minutes is that really? Okay. I I personally, ugh, stupid adulting. I personally think that they'll have their moments. They, they're not gonna last, but they mm-hmm. do have their gold medals. So yeah. Oh, well, oh, I'm sorry. That's just that. That's just the sequel talking. Technically. Well, they must have their gold medals. Like, did they I don't win? know. Well, no. Here's the thing. Ignoring, ignoring mm-hmm. what happened. Did they win the gold? We have no idea. I'm gonna say they were disqualified for a potentially illegal maneuver. <laughs> Oh my God, damn. Wait, wait, wait. I am ruining this movie? I am ruining this movie because I think that they're going to have a mutually satisfying but not long-lasting relationship? You are killing... You are You are saying that the Pemchenko is illegal. That is what you're saying. I refuse to accept that. You You killed it. You over-adulted. Well, I'm going to say that they won the gold. I learned it from you. <laughs> No excuse. I, of course you want them to have the gold. And yes, they probably won the gold because that was interesting and different. But remember, these are also people who have their favorites and were their favorites them? Probably not. I mean, it's the Pimchenko. <laughs> there are no judge. There, the judges are mortal. They cannot resist the Pimchenko. And of course, they're going to look at that and go, we cannot approve something so dangerous. <laughs> Disqualified. <laughs> And she be de- she develops a drinking problem. Oh, that is that is so gonna happen no. because she was so happy with she was very she was no, here's, really here's, happy with her upper body. Here's dancing. what's gonna happen. Um, disregarding the fact they meddled, I'm not gonna say if it was gold, silver, bronze. It's America. It's gold. Anyways, <laughs> so disregarding that whole aspect, aside, if they won bronze, it. The I, whole movie is a wash. I'm I sorry. I think what's going to happen. Can you imagine it in that case? Yeah. That you had for years? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He has a case. Why that does the gold look left. so coppery? <laughs> she, she puts like gold nail polish. On. <laughs> so here's what's going to happen. She is going to retire. He is going to continue for a while. I mean, they're still in like peak condition, but not like. Uh, He's going to go to the ice capades. I don't think. He, how dare you? He's not going to ice capade. What, what's going to happen is... Because he said he's never going to do it, which means he is, because that's what a dolphin is like. He's going to... He's going to coach. He's going to do commentary. He's going to start a podcast. I don't know. <laughs> it's 1992. No, he's the first... What's, what's going to happen? He's like, I am cornering the figure skating podcasting he's, universe. He's going to continue what he's doing. The thing is, I don't think he's going to do Olympic. He's going to figure something else out but there are endorsement opportunities and i think that's what Mm -hmm. he's going to do she is going to do the same but also she's going to do some philanthropy work i definitely think philanthropy work is totally i don't know why no well because she's got money and she can do whatever she wants what's she going to do go into a a march or a marriage but what's what's going to be kind of interesting though is that this whole thing is that she doesn't remember. I, I think that's what it was. She doesn't remember ever wanting to do this. And I think that's mm-hmm. what's going to be her moment. She is going yep. to step back and she's going to figure out what it is that she wants to do. And in the meantime, she's going to be doing some philanthropic good. Yeah. And that's when their relationship is going to actually come together because she hmm. needs to figure out what she's going to do. He is also going to figure it out, but he's going to keep, he's not going to be playing hockey, but he has now discovered that with figure skating, he can find a love in something, even though it wasn't his first choice. Mm-hmm. And from there, hmm. they are going to move on. They are going to grow and they're going to grow together. Oh my God. That is really lovely mm. with their gold medal. Yeah. It's a little <laughs> tarnished. I don't understand why. It's a little like, it's a little more orangey than they expected. I don't understand. Um, 
Oh, that's nice. Oh, thank you. I don't agree, but it's nice. Okay. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Illegal. Illegal. Yeah. Uh, so that's where it is. Um, so was, what happens to Pamchenko? What happens to him? The same thing that happened to Kerry Strug's trainer? I don't know. Yeah, you, the, he was the oh, you yeah, can do it. Yeah, 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 that's right. I think he's gonna. Yeah, he'll 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 go on to create lots of other semi illegal no, <laughs> figure skating moves, empowered by his his. Clearly, the tribe. man knows how to coach, so yeah, he's gonna keep coaching. He's a lovely man, and I if, want him to be my. Coach. And if they had done it right, he would have coached their child, and and that would have been the sequel, and that would have been better. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Well, I don't know. Sure. All right. Well, um, the cutting edge. There it was. Toe pick. Toe pick. Toe pick. Hey, Pauline and I would love to hear from you. Tweet us at H-E-A-M-Cast or email us at contact at H-E-A-M-Cast.com. Thanks for listening. <laughs>